Anyway, uh, I'm going to start with a theory on uh, the creditors, the current liabilities and non-current liabilities, and then we can do questions based on the depreciation. So we've got two hours to complete our session today. Right, let's have a look at our topic D here. We're looking at the accountabilities for the current and non-current liabilities. That's your slating unit number 13. Let's start with uh, current liabilities. So our intro goes as follows. The liability is defined as a claim which a party, other than the owners, has an asset of the entity which originated from the past transactions or the past events because of the legal action. It may also be expected that the payment of the liability will lead to an outflow of the resource. Okay, so that's actually the complete opposite of your assets. What classification of the liabilities include your current and the non-current liabilities depending on the period of the payment. I think I spoke about that one in terms of the current and the current liabilities. If it is payable within 12 months period, it will fall under the current liabilities. And if the payment is agreed in more than 12 months period, it will fall under your non-current liabilities. All right, let's look at the items that to be classified as the current liabilities. We've got trade payables. We've got the, the we didn't touch on this one. We'll touch on this one on Wednesday, I think. Uh, we touched on the accrued expenses. Remember when we did the adjustments on uh, Wednesday, we touched base on this one. The income received in advance, we did this one as well. So in the installment payable on the long-term loans, we haven't touched on that one as well. So the VAT towards your SARS, that's basically your VAT output, and then the bank open raft. Okay, so VAT, we did touch base on this one. Since there's only two, three items that are actually not touched. It's a trade payables is the installment, which is called the short-term portion of your, 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 the long-term payment and the bank over draft. So it's not a big deal. So let's look at our trade payables. That's your credit house, basically. It results from the goods and services purchased on credit. We did theirs. Remember when we, when I initiated a transaction and I said that when the goods are actually purchased from credit, then we record this under your purchases general. And it continues on more further and further and further and further. And it will also result in the discount to be received should the payment be done in a great specific date, which is deducted from the purchases. So you'll recall that when we were doing the income statements, particularly on the calculations of the cost of sales, remember you've got your open inventory and then you've got your purchases during the year. So should the discount be granted out of that purchase? And obviously it's going to be deducted under that purchase specifically. Right, so that's basically what they are just say in regards to that okay i did this in the pre this is one of the questions that we'll be doing on uh on on on, on, on wednesday okay but i'm going to continue with my theory so looking at the sundries in the current liabilities it's quite a number of liabilities that uh, to be mentioned however let's refer to the introduction part and the disclosure in the statement of the financial uh, position all right all the liabilities that are actually payable within 12 months, they all fall under your current liabilities. You just have to know as to which ones are those. But I gave you an example. Let's go back a bit. I gave you a summary of those. This, all of these liabilities in here, they fall under your current liabilities. Whenever you've got an accrued expense, the late payment, it will fall under that. And the income received in advance, it will also all under that if you've got a long-term loan and then you've got a payment that you made maybe in six months or 12 months period it will fall under the current liabilities and then if you've got a bad output as well so it also gonna come under the current liabilities and then if you've got the bank overdraft as well it will fall under including the trade and other payables control account but here's the thing the question is, if they do fall under the current liabilities, where do they go in terms of the components of your financial statements? The pure answer to that one, we will say, it will go, so it says it will go under the statement of financial position. So whatever that I have just showed you now, on the statement of financial position, you're going to have an item classified as current liabilities. If you've got any of this, they will fall under here. And you will be done. As long as you know them, as long as you can recognize or identify them, and then as long as you can know on how to make the adjustments on that one. As soon as you are done with the adjustments, then you can actually recall your current liabilities. All right, I hope we have more time and then I'll show you on how it works on, uh, on Wednesday.
Okay. So disclosures in the statement of financial position is exactly what I was talking about about uh, above there. So all the liabilities payment that are within 12 months period are recorded in the statement of financial position as current. Meaning that you're going to have that line item as current liabilities. And then as soon as you've identified which one of the uh, current liabilities items, then disclose them under the line item called current liabilities. <laughs> So we've got this thing called the trade and other payables control account. Uh, it's mainly performed as a T account. And this is where the final figure will be transferred through to your, uh, the current liabilities under the statement of financial position. Okay. So it's, it's not, it's not a coincidence that they do love to bring it in there. I don't know, cause you guys are actually writing the multiple choice now, but I'm sure question in regards to this kind of a control account. Some of you might have seen it in the, uh, one of your assessments. So there, this represents all the individual creatures in, uh, in the credit house ledger account. Right. Remember when we are purchasing goods on credit, so from different suppliers, so we're going to open up an account called the trade other payables control account. So what you do is you do what's called an individual credit ledgers account. Let's say it's Punti, it's several, it's a uh, Tembi, it's Chifiri and all of those as your creators. So what you're going to do is you're going to represent by opening each and every individual uh, creators list, and then you combine them at the end of the day to make it a total. And then you're going to say, in terms of the principal, because the trade and other payables was control account, increases on the credit side and decreases on the debit side. Then you're going to have the opening balance or the balance brought out on the credit side after you compiled the list of all individual creators ledger accounts. Okay, so that will be your opening balance. So, but going further in terms of treating the T, uh, the ledger accounts, what you're going to do is you're going to identify transactions that goes in there. So the manipulation will be: does it go to the credit side as part of an increase, or does it go to the debit side as part of a decrease? So it, it depends on how the question has been structured. So let's have a look at the posting procedures. Uh, all of these things are actually in your study guide, guys. So you must just, uh, if you feel like you need uh, clarity on that one, you can just go specifically under the trade payables learning it. So it says here that an individual entries in the purchases journal must be posted to the credit side of the personal creditors account in the trade payables ledger account. So basically what you do is you open, the creditors ledger for that specific person and then you put an opening balance on the credit side individually so and then while the returns must be recorded on the personal debit side of the personal accounts of the creators in the creditors ledger the day the transaction took place and the individual entries in the cpj must be debited in the trade payables ledger account in the same day the transaction took place so this is what happened if you can recall quite uh, correctly when you're doing many what is it topic a and particularly topic a we dealt with um your cash book analysis sorry the cash book uh journals basically so we did questions based on your cash payments journal cash receipts journal purchases journal sales journal sales returns journal and the purchases journal including the general channel Okay. So remember, you when you do all of those things, you open different types of columns, all right? And then uh, when you've got, let's say for example, you've got the purchases, the purchases or the creators control account under your cash payments journal, so the total in there is going to be moved from that purchases journal, sorry, from that um, cash payments journal, and then you move it through to your T accounts as part of your trade and other payables control account. So there's a chain in terms of the movement. There's where it starts and there's where it ends. And then if you want clarity on that one as well, remember we did what's called the accounting cycle, where we start by initiating transactions, we've got the source documents and then we move them to the cash book analysis, we do the ledger accounts and then we transfer that to the statement, sorry, trial balance, statement of financial position, and then we disclose the notes. That's how you, it works. If you jump any of the steps in your accounting cycle, you definitely go into have a problem because you need to know from here, where do I go? And then from there, where do I go? Up until you disclose things under your financial statements, including the notes. 
So the total creators control column in the purchases journal must be. Remember now, I'm analyzing all of these journals that we did before. Total creators control column in the purchases journal must be to the create side of the trade and other payables control account, while the returns must be posted on the debit side of the trade payables control account. And the totals of the creators control account in the payables journal must be to the debit side of the trade payables control account. Remember, we are paying, so obviously it's going to decrease. The, the the trade payables control account. So it's the same as when uh, the goods are being returned, well, whether they were bought on credit or they were bought on cash, obviously it's going to go on the debit side of the trade and other payables control account, simply because it's a reduction in the total amount of your trade payables control account. So the reduction, it will actually or automatically falls within the debit side of the trade payables control account. But entries that are made in the general journal that affect the creators must be posted to the personal accounts of the creditors daily and creators to total column on a monthly basis to their control accounts. Okay. So here we're looking at those. Remember, under the general journal, we've got we actually load or record the transaction that doesn't go in any of those journals. So that's specifically go under the general journal. So we're going to look at how is it going to affect uh Trade Let's say, for example, credit losses. We know that credit losses will affect your trade and other control accounts. So you are, if, if, if you're going to write off that kind of uh, data, for example, so the, the reality is because the data is actually an awesome which increase on the debit side, it should go on the increase side just to ensure that you are actually reducing that. So the same would actually apply under your trade and other payables control account. The next one should it's a should an error occur when balancing the large account subsidiaries, and the reason for that error must be identified. If you feel like there's an error, or if you are given a transaction which contains an error, the error must be identified before you can record that. Okay, and I just apply the accountant. So that's why companies uh, appoint the accountant and. The following error would be done or could have came this way. So you post, it's posting of the error towards the debit side instead of the credit side. So initially, the error occurred in this way. Instead of you posting the error towards the credit side, you put it on the debit side. Okay, so I gave you trans, uh, the other one is actually the transposition of figures. Instead of you writing 210, you write 100. Those are the mistakes that they can actually happen because of the typing error. Or because of you students, as you are writing down your assignment or your exams. So the incorrect balancing of the total listing. So sometimes we're running out of time. We're thinking like we're left with about five minutes. So and then you are actually punching the wrong figures on your calculators. Obviously, it will lead to an imbalance. Then you need to redo your work by recalculating it again so that you can get it correct. So the error in posting entries in the journals to be posted to the large accounts. You post the errors, so you post the transaction towards your journal instead of posting it to the large accounts. That might also call it, uh, it might also cause what's called the default in what's called errors. <laughs> okay, so let me let, let me just read for you on the first one. When you post towards your debit side instead of the credit side. So when you correct this kind of an error, it means that let's say you've got trade another, let's say trade another receivables control account and uh, you put an error on the debit side instead of the credit side. What you're going to do is you go into minus that error on the debit side, meaning that you rectify the debit side first. And then after rectifying the debit side, you move that correct amount to the credit side, meaning that it should lead you to a zero on the debit side with that error. And then you are going to move to the, uh, the credit side of that specific account. I think we'll see more of that uh, when we finalize our things next week. So this is actually one of the examples that we'll take on next week as well. Okay, uh, let me just have a look at this. The following error was discovered as per the list of, it's actually one of our uh, questions. But learning unit four, we've got non-current liabilities here. So non-current liabilities is defined as a liability which is payable for, for a period yeah, then how do you record that? Under the statement of financial position, you're going to have a line item called the non-current liabilities. 
normally under this one, the most important one that we mostly deal with is actually the long term loan. Okay. So long term loans and the mortgages are actually part of this. So for every installment payable in the next financial period must be disclosed as the non current sorry, as the current liabilities in the statement of financial position. So it means that for whatever the for the whatever the short term uh, short, term, short term portion we're paying from the loans or the mortgages, because they would be payable within six or twelve months. Period. So you need to create a line item called the non-current liabilities. Just show me that it's a short term portion based on the loans or the mortgages. Okay. Still have uh, quite a few number of example goals in here. Let me take you back. Any questions before I move on? Uh, I want to understand what is interest capitalized. The interest capitalized. Um, the interest capitalized is actually an interest that has been capitalized on either the loan that has been given out. So it's actually the 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 the, the what is it the loan including the interest added together. Uh, this is our third class work, and uh, I prepared it this way because I wanted everybody to understand how to go about the process of calculating the depreciation. In a, in a different in a different types of the method given okay and uh, I also wanted you guys to know on how to get to the calculations in regards to the disposal of an asset that's called an asset realization okay I think those are going to be the most important thing that we'll be focusing on today okay so I will be doing the calculations just on the interface that you guys are seeing now and then so that to understand what exactly am I talking about? All right, let me carry on. Let me carry on now. So we've got classwork three, and it presented. It says that this present the accounting work for Putin Limited. So we've got the balances at the first of January 2022. We're going to regard this as the beginning of the month, right? Or the sorry, the beginning of the year of. Uh, beginning of uh, yeah. all right. Uh, so, if our beginning of the year is the first of January, then that means the year is going to be the year. Oh, sorry, I think it's just my number. It's going to be the thirty-first of December, twenty twenty-two. So, we're more interested in what happened here. That means it's actually in between the current year. Okay, so we are interested in uh, this part. This is where our interest lies. Okay. So transaction goes as this follows. We've got the accumulated depreciation for the equipment is 3,400 rent and for the vehicle is 5,200 rent. And then we've got the cost. The equipment is 80,000 rents and the vehicle is 50,000 rents. And then we've got the additional information. I think I must just upsize this one as well. So additional information goes in this way. It says that on the 1st of July 2002, Putin Limited sold one of the delivery vehicles to Dinana for 8,000 rand cash. And the process was used to help finance the other vehicle from there, from TT Motors for 30,000 rand. It was also on cash as well. Cost price of the sold vehicle was 15,000 rand, and its accumulated depreciation amounted to 7,000 rand on the 1st of January 2002. But right. additional information number two goes in this way. Putin Limited sold uh, one of the equipment to Danny for 3,000 rand cash as well. The cost of the sold equipment is 9,000 rand, and the accumulated depreciation on this pattern, on this uh, uh, equipment amounted to 2,500 rand. And as of January 2002. Let's look at how the depreciation is going to be accounted for. So the depreciation is going to be accounted. We've got equipment. Sorry, my types. Excuse my typing. Equipment is actually at uh, 10% on the diminution balance method. And the vehicle is actually 20% on the diminution balance method. And we all know that the diminution balance method says cost minus accumulated depreciation and you minus your if we've got the residual there okay. and then you multiply that by 
you're going to look at uh, when was the asset purchased and or when was it actually sold and then you're going to adjust that if it was actually sold in the middle of the year so you just say multiply by 60 but i'm just giving you an example and then you multiply that by the percentage given That's fine. So let's look at the required part. It says that the year end is the 31st of December 2022. We need to do the applicable ledger accounts and properly balance them for the year end of December 2022. The first asset account is going to be the vehicle. And the second one, sorry, equipment. The second one is the vehicle. The third one, they want us to do the accumulative depreciation for both these assets. And then we do the realization account. And then we do the the depreciation account. It's been a part two to complete. Okay, uh, let me just do these. Okay, I've told you guys that uh, we are going to do this kind of questions. Let's start with uh, the equipment. The equipment. Any idea on how you're going to calculate this for me? Any idea on how you're going to calculate this for me? All right, let me just say the lay before the ledger counts, let's do what's called the calculations. Let me bring me back up to speed. Right, who wants to help me here? Okay, so we'll do um Cost price. Cost price. Minus accumulated depreciation. Uh, minus the accumulated depreciation. Let me just do this at the moment. Right. How much was the cost for the equipment? Um, uh, 30,000. 30,000. Right. 30,000. Okay. And you minus. Accumulated depreciation, uh, which is 3,400. 3,400. Okay. Then times, times percentage. Can okay, multiply by, is it 10%? Is it I think it's 10%. Uh, it is 10%. Can you 10%, see it? Yeah. Yeah, let's just do this. It's 10%. Then you multiply this by 10%. Okay, somebody with a calculator picking, help me there. Okay. How much is the final figure there? So I'm finding uh, 2,660. 2,660. Yeah, so I don't know if anyone else can find the same answer. All right. Anybody with a different view? Same answer. Same answer. Okay, uh, Jesse, you can go ahead. Are we still on the equipment or do you want to do a different? Um... So if we're done with the equipment and then we can go, we can do the same for the vehicle. The same thing is going to be for the vehicle. Okay, so it's going to be a cost. Let's go back and see how much is the cost for the vehicle. I've got 50,000 rent and then the accumulated yeah. depreciation is 5,200. So yes. Yeah. So 50,000 minus 5,200, and then you multiply that by, I think the depreciation is 20%. Okay, 20, divide this by 100. Right, final figure there quickly. 8,960. 8? 8960. 8, 8, so it's 8,960. Oh, so it's all diminishing balance method. Okay. It's all diminishing. It's all here. It's all here. Yeah. Then we're all good. Oh, we're all good. Anybody with a different view? They didn't put the year, like six, six over 12. They didn't put, I think I would assume that they didn't put the year because it was actually from the 1st of January up until the 31st of December. I mean, on the calculations. You want them to put 60 divided by 12. Yes. Can so can I, just, can I just maybe uh, help her out, sir? Sure. 
so I, I think because she's confused with the fixed method and this uh, diminishing method. The diminishing balance method. Yeah. Okay. So if it was fixed method, then we was gonna put because it's from beginning of the year to the end of the year, so it's gonna be it was gonna be twelve over twelve. Oh, because it's the beginning of the year, she say that because it's actually okay. It's the method in question particularly, and then afterwards is because. Uh, Sorry, uh, Jesse, can you come? Can, can you come again? I think I, I missed that part. Okay, so I'm saying uh, she, maybe she, she because she said that we didn't uh, put the year the on on the calculations. So oh. I'm just clarifying to her that because we are using the diminishing method. Okay. But That's I think I understand why she's thinking like that. I think it's because of when the. The vehicle, is it the vehicle that was sold at the equipment? The date of um, when they sold the vehicle? It was sold on the 1st of July 2002. The vehicle or the equipment? It's the vehicle. Uh, so see, maybe that's see. where we needed to apply the prorata. Okay. Because we only calculate the, the depreciation up to the date when the, when the vehicle was sold. The, right. For the equipment only, not the vehicle. Okay, uh, I think you I guys. I, 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 like, I like your thinking and your opinions here. So you guys are actually quite correct. But let me just um, give you a bit of a hint on how you have to go about this thing. Okay, I want everybody to actually listen to me carefully, and thank you for those who participated in this one. So we have established that the 1st of January 2002 is the beginning of the year. And then obviously, because we run 12 months accounting cycle, so the 31st of December 2002 is actually 12 months, which is actually in four. So and then again, we've recognized our set in two ways. We've got equipment and then we've got the vehicle at the same time. So you can't just leave out things like that. Obviously, when, when it comes to the issue of the depreciation, you've got the additional information that's going to cost as to make an adjustment with regards to that specific asset. OK, so this is what happened. When you were given this kind of a question, you need to look at when was the asset purchased? Did we buy more asset? Did we add? Did we sold? OK, so let's start by saying, let's start our calculations by doing the equipment with regards to the required part. OK. So the equipment, because remember, the assumption would be, or the reality would be, we had more equipment, but one of the equipment has been sold. Okay, so this is how you're going to do things. Because the equipment has been sold, we don't care about it anymore. It's no longer useful for the production of our company. So this is what you're going to do when you calculate the depreciation. You just say equipment, you say the cost. Let me just do it that way. Let's see the cost. Let's see. Uh, you're going to have what's called. Can you just go back quickly and just say equipment? We've got the existing ones. Cost minus the depreciation. Okay, then minus the okay. The reason why you're doing that is because you are actually complying with the diminishing balance method. Okay. So this is how you're gonna go. You would say existing equipment is thirty thousand rands. Okay, so you'd say my cost is thirty thousand. Then you're also going to look at how much was the cost of the vehicle that sort of equipment that was actually sold. So the cost price of the vehicle or the equipment that was actually sold it amounted to nine thousand rand. And then you say cost minus cost because it's no longer there. And then you minus the receiver value, which is zero. You don't have any receiver value. And then you're going to have the accumulated depreciation. Okay. 
initial. The same principle would apply. You're going to look at the initial accumulated depreciation is 3,400, right? And then let's look at how much was the accumulated depreciation for the sold uh, assets, 2,500 rand. So you're going to say 3.4. Yes, 3.4, and then you minus 2.5. Okay. So there's no residual value. How much is 30,000 minus 9,000 rand? Supposed to be between 1,000, I think. And then how much will be the 3.5 minus 2.4? How much is 3,500 minus 2,500? 3,400 minus 2,000 should be 900 rand, right? Am I getting it right? Yes, that's right. It's 9,000 rand. So this is how you're going to record it. Okay. Then afterwards, you're looking for what's called how much is the carrying value? So it's 900. 900. 900. Wait, sorry, I think I made a mistake. Nine, I said 9,000. Yeah, I can see it's 900. Sorry about that. So your carrying value would be 21,000 minus 900. How much is it? It should be 20,100, if I'm not mistaken. Am I correct? And then you're going to say multiply by 10%. And how much is it going to be? How much is 20,100 multiplied by 10%? Somebody help me quickly. 2010. That's 2010. All right, up to so far, do you guys, uh, okay, this is the carrying value. I think I must just put it uh, nicely. Let me just say depreciation. So you take 2,100 multiplied by 10% and you divide that by 100. It should, the depreciation for the existing vehicle is actually 2010, 2010. That's the final figure that you got. Before I go further, do you guys get to understand this part? Anybody with a question, quickly? Anybody with a question, quickly? Hi, okay. so I don't think there's any questions. All right, All right let me just move on now. Then we're going to look at uh, the sold one, sold equipment. We need to calculate the depreciation for the sold equipment. So we're going to look at the question. Let's just go up and look at it. Right. So we are looking at additional information number two says Putin Limited sold to one of the equipment to Danny for 3,000 and cash as well. The cost price of their sold equipment is 9,000 rand and the accumulated depreciation for that printer is 2,500 rand on the 1st of January to 2020. Okay, so this is how you're going to attempt to it. So the sold equipment, let's look at how much. It's 9,000. And the accumulated depreciation is 2,500 rand. And then you're going to say cost minus accumulated depreciation. Minus, let me see for a So our cost is 9,000. We minus the accumulated depreciation. Let me just see if I did it exactly the same process. Okay, yeah. So it's 9,000, and then you minus uh, 2,500 rent. That's your accumulated uh, So you're going to get what's called carrying value here. How much is the difference between 9,000 and 2,500? Is it 6.5? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, carrying value. We got so about six thousand five hundred rand. And we need to calculate the depreciation from here. Depreciation will be six thousand five 
multiply by 10%. So how much is it? How much is 6,500 multiplied by 10%? 650. Is it 650? That's what you appreciate. 650. Oh, yeah. Okay. Let's see. Let's get that. But that's actually the depreciation for the sole vehicle. I've got a question for you before you can raise up your question. Let's say this vehicle was actually sold on the 1st of uh, September. How was your recurring going to be? I'm just going to show it here. From 6,000 rent, you were just going to say, is it 6,005 or 6,000? Sorry, I think I forgot that. So it would depreciate nine months out of 12, so it's nine over 12. Now we're going to depreciate, that's uh, going to be three out of 12, actually. It was, so sold, going, it was sold in September, right? Yes. Okay. So it's going to be 6.5 multiplied by 10%. Yeah. You multiply this by three divided by 12. I'll tell you why. You, wish, you should you tell me how much is your, okay, let's, I just wanted to engage you in the process here. Why am I using three divided by twelve? Oh, it's the balance that it would be. So you can't get how much you would have lost, right? So sorry, 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 sorry. Uh, sorry, who am I speaking with? I have to apologize to you. Tembi. 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 Yes, you're right. You'd say nine divided by twelve. Yeah. Uh, you I think had your answer would be we only had it for nine months before we can sell it. You're right. You're right by that. Sorry about that. Happy. Yeah. Okay, so we've got nine divided by 12 because we, but if it was an added equipment on the 1st of September, it was going to be three divided by 12. Does it make sense? It all depends on when did we remove the asset from the business or when did we gain the asset in the business? Does it make sense? So it all depends yes. on the sale of an asset or the addition, which is the buy of an asset. Everybody happy? Yeah. Okay, so far then we can have what's called uh, the total depreciation. Depreciation for equipment. Would be. Uh, I'm on the wrong. Sorry. Total depreciation. I think I'm not doing the right things here. But so, the total depreciation will be okay, sorry, my things were mixed up. Total depreciation of the equipment will be 2010 plus. How much is the other one? Is it 2010 and 650? Okay, yes, sir. We've got 2010, it's here. Where's the other depreciation? It's 650 for the sold equipment. The sold equipment is 650, yeah. So it's 2010 plus 650. But okay. I have a question on that, sir. Okay, I'll come to you just now, just a moment. So the amount will be 2,660,2660. Okay, please come, come with your question. So the, the, the ones we were calculating, the equipment, the depreciation for the equipment that we initially calculated, was it for the new year or was it for last year? And was the equipment not included in it? already the sold equipment i mean all right um remember under the equipment we don't have the previous year we've got the current year which is 2022 that's the first point that i have to make in here okay so what she's asking is the depreciation calculated was it for the previous year or the current year so this is how it goes 
if you can look at this, this is our total uh, cost of the equipment. So the assumption will be we've got multiple equipments. So it might be a printer, it might be a computer, it might be whatever, whatever they. So added together, they give us a total of 30,000 rands. Okay. So one of the equipment out of the 30,000 rand has been sold. Okay. Let's go back to the transaction. It has been, uh, it has been sold for 3,000 rand. So automatically out of the 30,000 rand, it means that you have to take 30,000 rand because their part of the equipment is gone. Okay. So that means out of our cost there, because we've lost the 3,000 rand, so one of the equipment has been sold for 3,000 rand. So the identification was the cost price out of the 30,000 rand for that specific equipment was 9,000 rand, which is here. Make sense? Yes, sir. Okay. And then the cumulative depreciation for the 9,000 rand on that specific equipment is 2,500 rand. I don't know if that makes sense. And then we go back again, we look at how much was the total de uh, accumulated depreciation for the equipment. That's what up here is 3,400 rand. So unfortunately, that equipment was carrying a lot of accumulated depreciation, which is bigger than it's actually here, 2,500. Does it make sense? Yes, now I understand. No, it's, it's clear now. Thank you, sir. Is it clear? Okay. Yes, it's so, okay. Thank you. Yes, but remember, in terms of the standard, we still require to, let me just explain this to the others. In terms of the standard, we still require to calculate how much was the depreciation for this asset that we had for that equipment. And then we came to, I think we came to 2010 or 650. It's one of those. So the existing and the sword equipment. Okay, so it's here. You see it. 2010. So we still have to calculate the depreciation for that one when we fix the books for that, just to show how much was the depreciation. We now move on to the vehicle. Right. Vehicle, we've got the cost of 50,000 rand and then we've got 5,200 rand. So let's have a look at additional information on the one. On the 1st of July 2022, Putin Limited sold one of the delivery vehicle to Dinana for 8,000 rand cash and the process was used to help finance the other vehicle from. TT Motors for 80,000 rand cash. Cost price of the vehicle sold was 15,000 rand and its accumulated depreciation is 7,500 rand. Okay, somebody just give me the co keep the cost for me there. Okay, so the same principle would apply in here. Let's go to vehicle. So it will be the existing the cost. Uh, I think our cost is, is it 50,000 rands? Help me quickly. So the, yes, the original cost of this is 50,000. And then we're going to look at the cost of the vehicle that was actually sold. I think it was, mm -hmm. uh, let me just have a look at it. Cost price is 15,000, okay. So you'd say minus 15,000, and you could still go to do with the accumulated depreciation. So the accumulated depreciation will be the same. So let's go up and have a look at the accumulated depreciation. Uh, uh, three, sorry, 5,200 rent. And how much is the accumulated depreciation here? It's Seven, higher than the accumulated depreciation. 7,500. Yeah, for the sold one, it's actually a bit higher. Okay, nice far. Let's do this. We can change it to, let's say, 1,500. So... Where is it? So, sorry, how much is the original one? Give me the figure there for the accumulated depreciation. Is it 3,400? 5, 5,200. And then you're going to say 1.5. Okay. How much is it? It could be uh, 3,700. 700. 3,700 grand. Okay. So that's fine. How much is the total here? Actually, it must just move it to this side. Right? How much is 15,000 minus 50,000? It should be 35,000. 35, okay, so then we move 3,000 rent, 3,700 rent here. And then we go to have it like that, just to show that you're minusing it. So quickly, somebody help me. How, how much is 35,000 minus uh, 3,700? 31,300. 31,300 rent. That's my carrying value. 1,300 rand. Now, how much will be the depreciation? 
1,300 rand multiplied by 20%. Uh, 20%. Uh, and you multiply by what again? Six divided by twelve, right? Assault on the first of July. How much is thirty-one thousand three hundred multiplied by twenty percent? Multiply by uh, six divided by twelve. Three thousand one hundred and thirty. How much? Three thousand one hundred and thirty. Three thousand one hundred, like this, right? Yeah. Okay. So let's have a look at uh, the. Did you buy the yeah. new vehicle here? We bought the new vehicle, right? I'll finance these to the other vehicle cost. It is costed about 30,000 rand. Right. right, let's have a look at the new one. Uh, right. Here, new vehicle. How, how, is it going to, how is the deprecation going to be treated there? Right, so the new is the cost. Uh, is it 30,000? Help me out, please. It's 30, right? Yes, 30,000. Okay, so it's going to be 30,000, right? So on the new vehicle, do we have the accumulated depreciation? The answer is no, then we going to have, and they are. Okay, so a book value for the curing amount equals 30,000, right? Okay, let's look at the depreciation. Depreciation would be 30,000. Multiply by 20% at the same rate, right? Then you multiply that by, so you divide it by 12. So how much is, can somebody help me quickly? How much is 30,000 then multiply by 20% times 60 divided by 12? I'm sure 30,000 or 20% should be somewhere 6,000 rand. And then 30,000. It's a half. So it's going to be 3,000 rand. Thank you. Okay. This is our depreciation for the new vehicle. Happy? No. You're not happy? Please come, come forward. Okay. With you. So. The calculation you were doing earlier when you, when you started dealing with vehicles, when you, you did 50,000 minus 15,000, I thought you were trying to calculate the depreciation for the remaining vehicles of the company. And at some point, you were going to get to calculate the depreciation of the vehicle that has been sold. So the 6 divided by 12 was supposed to be for the vehicle that has been sold. And then you are going to add it up to the balance of the vehicle that was still going to remain with the company. Okay, so I the, don't. Know sorry, the first one? Vehicle. The vehicle, yes. So you started by calculating the carrying amount for the depreciation of the year, whereby you removed the cost price of the sold vehicle. Yes. So I thought there you were calculating the depreciation for the year on the remaining vehicles of the company and yes. after that where to calculate the depreciation of the sold vehicle that's when we are going to do uh, the, to multiply the, the the carrying amount by the, the the rate and then the six divided by 12 then we add them together for the depreciation of the year plus the depreciation of the new vehicle okay are you, are so you i don't understand Are you referring to this one, the first one, the 50,000 minus 15,000? Yes, sir. Let's go back to the question quickly, just a moment. So basically what she's saying is that we haven't calculated the depreciation of the sold amount. No, she's the saying sold. that uh, the, the remaining vehicles depreciation, the depreciation for the, yeah, she's saying that the, the depreciation for the sold vehicle is actually not calculated. Yeah, that's what the one not standing, because was sold in July, so six months of the year, it would have also accumulated depreciation. You want to help her on that one? I don't think she's saying that, basically. Oh, okay. I don't think she's saying that. Can you, can you okay, please- Okay, what I'm saying is that, 
what I'm saying is that, first of all, we need to calculate the depreciation on the balance from what you started. So the 31,300 is the carrying amount of the, of, of the, 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 the remaining vehicles in the company. Vehicles, yes. So we calculate that for the whole year because they are remaining. Now we take the sole vehicle and we calculate the depreciation over the first six months that they will still be in the company until the time they are sold. So we don't, we didn't do that, and you, you calculated it for six over twelve for the remaining vehicles that are still remaining in the company. I don't understand. Okay, basically what you're saying is, uh, according to the last, I get to what you say. According yeah. to our understanding is, uh, we had the total vehicle for fifty thousand rands. And then we sold part of the vehicles in the middle of the year, which is here, right? So according to her, what's actually left from here, it should be for the whole 12 months, not for the whole yeah. time. Am I getting it right? Yes, sir. Am I getting it right? Yeah, no, I think uh, she's actually getting it right. So here, what happened is, uh, okay, let me just see. Let me go to the vehicle. Right here. So she's saying that the cost here minus this should be the accumulated depreciation for the remaining um, six months. Okay, it should be for only actually it should be for January up until the December part, and then we are having this the accumulated depreciation. The carrying this. So what you're saying is the carrying value here is actually for the full twelve months. That's what I think, sir. For the remaining vehicle. For the remaining vehicle that actually lasted for the 12 month period. Let me tell you why. We have to apportion it for both of them. We have to split them into six months. And the reason why we're splitting them into six months period is because of uh, the was actually this vehicle. This is actually causing a contradiction in terms of, uh, let me see, the other vehicle was actually bought here for the amount of 30,000 rands. So we are, the assumption is the continuity will be based on this one. So this one that we had, the original 50,000 rent, we just only show in the split, but it has to end in six month period. Okay, I'm getting confused. Okay, initially we had this, for I get where you're coming from. Initially we had 50,000 rent, right? It was only valid for 12 months, okay? So mm -hmm. they, I think I'm confusing myself as well, but yeah. Okay, let's... so there was the 50,000 vehicle, right, for the whole year, or 50,000 yes. value of vehicles. And then we removed the one we sold, and therefore we need to come calculate the depreciation for the whole year. And then yes. we have to calculate separately what is sold for the six months, and then what is bought for the balance of the six months. Sorry, uh, let me just see. So just... the sell is right. No, no, actually, the person who suggested that it should be for the whole 12 months, she's actually right. Yeah, so she's right. right. So she's the balance right. is 12 months. And so then actually, the, the depreciation, thank you for rectifying me on that one. Let me just see. I'm looking for the vehicle itself. So basically, this is supposed to go. Sorry about that. Sorry, my apologies. Supposed to be 81,300 multiplied by 20%. Sorry about that. How much is it? 6,260 rand. 6,260 rand. Okay, now the split will be, uh, I think I'm confused about, okay. So the six months, this one we are fine with it. It has to be, because yeah. we bought it on the 1st of July, 2000. But we still have to calculate the depreciation for the sold Sold vehicle. vehicle. Sorry, no, you're right there. Sold vehicle. No, she's right. Sorry about it. It was my fault. So how much was the cost for the sold vehicle? 15,000. Uh, wait, just a moment. The cost is 15,000 rent and the accumulated depreciation is 1,500. Am I correct? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So basically what you're going to do is uh, the cost, which is 15,000, I'm going to put in the right amount. Yeah. Okay, so how much is the carrying value? It should be somewhere 18,500, if I'm not mistaken. 
sir. Okay, so it's 18,500. So the depreciation will be 18,500. Is it 20%? 20%, yes. And six over two. Thank you so much for, for, for that hint. So, how much is the final figure here? 1,350. So the total depreciation, uh, total depreciation, uh, plus, the other one is how much? 3,000, right? Okay. The other one is how much? 6,260, so you need to correct it up there. Not correct it. Uh, yes, 3,130, you need to change it. 6,260. 6,260. 260. 260. Yeah, so the total depreciation will be plus 6,260, right? So you add them together. Uh, how much is it? You're going to have uh, the first uh, addition of the 4,350. How much is 4,350 plus 6,250? So it should be 10,000. 610. 660. 10. 10. 10. Yes, that's what I'm saying. 10, 6, 5, 0. Like this. Oh, 10, 6, 10. 10, 6, 10. Like this. This is a little correctly. 1,350 plus 3,000 is 4,350. Right, and uh, I think you're right. Yeah, this is actually the total depreciation for the vehicle. Okay, all right. Anybody with a question just before I go ahead? Any questions? It looks like this question is going to take a bit of a long time. Okay, let's have a look at uh, what's the required part. We'll just go back to the second required part. So are we fine with... Uh, okay, now I'll put you in the wrong one. Are we fine with this ledger account for the equipment and the vehicle? So the... Sorry, the... The ledger account for the, for the, for the, for the, for the equipment Let me just see. I was going to say because. Increase. So when you can draw the 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 the, 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 the T account for the ledger here. So what what you're gonna do is, let's say. Habit. It's still on the equipment, right? Opening balance. How much is your opening balance for the equipment? For the balance brought down, basically. 30,000. Do you agree? Do you agree? Yes, sir. Okay. And uh, let's see, were there any equipment that were purchased during the year? Let's go to the additional um, information there, there, there. Okay, there was a sale of the equipment. Can you all see that? Pretty limited sold one of the equipment. Denny for 3,000 rand cash as well. The cost price of the sold is 9,000 rand. The accumulated depreciation on the sprint is 2,500 rand. Okay, and then how are we going to record this? I'm going to record this. We're going to do what's called the key account under this before we can record that. Does that make sense? So that means that we're going to leave this unopened so that we can actually complete it later on. So you can just still say the same thing. Open and balance under your icon as well. Balance. 
How much was the opening amount for the vehicle? 50,000. We agree. Everybody happy? Uh, let's come to, let me open the accumulated depreciation. Let's go for the equipment. Okay. So the opening balance for this one is going to be on the credit side. So you can just say balance brought down. Balance brought down. So how much is the opening balance accumulated depreciation for the equipment? It's 3,400 rand, right? 3,400 range. So the adjustment would be like how much would be worked in what way? Let's have a look at actually let's do the calculations on uh, the realization account. So it's, it's purely because it's open purely because of uh, there was an asset that has been disposed. So we're going to look at your debit side. Moment. You're going to look at the cost of that specific asset that was actually disposed. So you're going to debit that. Uh, the cost. So we're looking at uh, say recommended cost. Okay, so that's going to be on your debit side, and then you're going to look at the accumulated depreciation on the credit side. And that's a limitation. Okay, and you guys, I'm just going to shorten it. You understand that you are talking about. And then uh, you're going to have um, the account. Uh, so if you allow me to combine them, or can I just do them separately? Can you allow me to combine it, or can just can I just do it separately? Separately. Here. Separately. Separately. Okay, which is uh, disposal. Okay, who understand how to treat the, the realization account or the disposal account based on our, our assets? Who understand that? Who understand that? Everybody there? Hi there, um, yes, Mr. Miso, I'm still here. Unfortunately, I don't understand 100% how to do the realization account fully. No, no, no problem, Gina. There's somebody that Thank I'm making for. No start. problem. <laughs> Thank Christelle. you so much. Christelle, can you can you give me? No, on sir. Uh, I don't. I use no. my notes when I get there because I'm not <laughs> sure where the accounts are coming from. Why this one is going on the debit side? Why the other one is going on the credit side? It's quite confusing. I don't understand. It's quite confusing for you, right? Okay, let me just say. Uh, you're going to look at uh, the. I just want to get my calculator done. Just a moment. Just hold on for a minute. Nice. Uh, just a moment.
Okay. Uh, let's get back to to it now. Oh, thank you. Uh, we just going to open up. Uh, this is a realization account for the equipment. So basically, you're going to look at uh, the cost for. Let's, let's just have a look at the how much was the accumulated depreciation for the sold equipment. We go back. And equipment. Just a moment. Just want to get how much is the equipment depreciation existing? Any amount the depreciation is this for the sold equipment. Yeah. So it is uh, the depreciation. It's actually six thousand. Sorry, six hundred and fifty rands. Do you agree with me? So what you're gonna do is uh, you're going to have uh, just a moment. Where's my organization account now? Let's see. Realization, realization account. Okay, I think it's somewhere up here. Okay. So you're going to have the accumulated depreciation for. So. So the equipment. And. Or plus the current year. Current year. Sold. Let's see how much is the accumulated depreciation for the sold uh, equipment. Let's see, uh, the equipment is actually this one equipment. Yeah, pretty limited sold one of the equipment for today and for cash, 3,000 rand for cash as well. And the cost price for these is 9,000 rand. The accumulated depreciation is 2,500 rand. Okay, so it's going to be 2,500 rand. And then add current year depreciation for sold. Uh, sorry, can you just can you just can you just mute yourself? Eh? I can't hear. I, I mean, I'm. Can you mute yourself? Eh? Just check who is. Uh, Jesse, can I ask you to mute yourself, please? Jesse. Uh, I'm struggling with my network at the moment. Uh... Is it? Hi there, Mr. Miso. When yes. um, there are students that are muted, that are speaking that you don't want, you can just go onto their page and mute them. Okay. Um, okay. Let me see on how so I just muted that. Jesse because I don't think that they're in the group at the moment. Okay, no problem. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, let's go back to. All right. Uh, the accumulated depreciation plus the current year depreciation for this one. We are going to have, we had 2,500 rent. I just want to check that, confirm that. Okay. Okay. okay, guys, help me. How much is the accumulate? How much is the depreciation for the sold equipment? Can somebody help me quickly, please? I'm trying to find that figure here. I can't find it. Okay, let me just go to my, I'm on my back now. Let me just have to my one thousand one thousand three hundred and fifty for the sole vehicle only. Okay, depreciation. Uh, for the sole vehicle, no, for the sole equipment is six hundred and fifty. I'm actually in the equipment part. It should be six hundred and fifty. Do we all agree? Sorry, for which one? For the sole equipment, it should be six hundred and fifty. Yes, yes. Right. So meaning that you're going to add up the depreciation for the sold vehicle that we've calculated in the accumulated depre uh, depreciation for the sold vehicle. And it's going to go through to the your credit side. And then we're going to look at uh, the 
we sold it, right? We sold that equipment. It means that we're going to look at, let's have a look at uh, the equipment part. Okay, put limited sold one of the equipment to Danny. Okay, so we're going to have at the sale of that equipment, then we're going to have bank. Then we're going to look at the cost of that uh, vehicle. So when you're doing the realization account, actually things are going the opposite way. Remember, if you were doing the, the equipment account at its, or the bank account, or that is forced asset. So this would go to the debit side because our bank account is actually increasing. So now because of, we, are, we need to determine if it was sold at a profit or it was actually sold at a loss, then the, we, we're going to do a cross-reference of that. So meaning that we move we're moving the bank account as an increase to actually the decrease side of the realization account. So it has to be that amount of 3,000, 3,000 Okay, and uh, we're going to have uh, just a moment. Should be credit here. Credit of the accumulated depreciation. And then what are we debiting here? It's supposed to debit the cost. Sold. Can somebody help me? How much is the cost of the equipment sold? How much is the amount? Is it three thousand or seven thousand? First price of the sold equipment is nine thousand rand. Okay. Thank you very much. Oh, how much is two thousand five hundred plus uh, six hundred and fifty? Should be three thousand. Sorry, three thousand one hundred and fifty. Is it 3160 like this? No, no okay. 150, 150. 150, okay. 3150. 3000 is actually here. And we have here. And uh, if um, the, the standard says that if our credit side, when you do the realization of card limits, if I credit side, I credit to the not debit side, that means that disposal was actually made at a profit. And then if our credit side is actually less than the debit side, it means that the disposal was actually made at a loss. And then I'll also show you on how you are actually going to record that. So let's have a look at the credit and the credit. Really, I'm supposed to say. Sorry, credit, and then you debit this. So, uh, let me just quickly move here. Okay. So looking at this now, so how much is 3,000 plus 3,150? So it's uh, the credit side would reflect the total of 6,150. And the debit side, it's actually 9,000 rand. Is our debit side really 9,000? Most price is 9,000 rand. So you can see that our debit side is actually greater than our credit side. How much is 9,000 minus 6,150? 6 Somebody quickly. 2,850. Come again. 2,850. All right, so it will be the loss from the disposal of Uh, sorry, so give me that one again. It's 2,850. Yes. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, let's move on to the realization account. On, I'll open up for your questions now. now. You guys are actually uh, having questions. So it's the same process we just follow up. Bank, then you credit. Why am I now? Okay. Cumulative depreciation. Yeah. 
Org. Okay. So how much is the total? Okay, let's start with uh, the sold uh, vehicle. On the 1st of July, Koji Limited sold one of the delivery vehicle to Dinana for this. Cash process is up there. Okay, cost price of... Uh, The so sold vehicle was 15,000 rents. You can just go back quickly. So we're going to look at the cost price of this, which is 15,000 rent. And how much is the, can somebody help me with the depreciation in the current year for the sold vehicle, along with the accumulated depreciation for the sold vehicle? Okay, let's just go up there quickly. Accumulated depreciation is 1,500 rent. And then how much was the depreciation for the sold vehicle? So you just say 1.5 and then to get that. So we so just say plus. So how much is the how much is the accumulated depreciation for the sole vehicle? Wait, okay, I've got the accumulated depreciation is 1.5 for the sole vehicle. So how much is the depreciation for let's go to the vehicle? Depreciation for the sold one. One thousand three hundred and fifty. Is it one thousand cost carrying amount? View sold. Okay, it's one thousand three hundred fifty. That's correct. Then uh, you just say accumulated deep minor. Then you give it to for just a moment. Is that 1350, right, Christelle? That's it, sir. Okay, so it's going to be 15,000 rent, and then you're going to have, so you are having how much? Is it 1,850? So 1,500 plus 1,350. Is it, would you agree with me if I say 2,850? Yes. Okay. So how much did we receive? for the sole vehicle is it 8000 i think it's 8000 and it's a uh, 8000 let's move it here so our credit side is actually less than our debit side can you see that Our credit side is actually, this is the credit side. I think it's about uh, 8,000. It should be 10,850. And the debit side is 15,000 rent. How much is 15,000 rent? Let me just do this so that you guys may not get confused. How much is 15,000 rent minus 10,850? 3,150. Beg your pardon? 3150. Okay, 3150. We still injured a loss on the disposal. Loss on the disposal of the vehicle. But this might be a bit confusing for you because we don't have. Sorry, I didn't establish the T account. Sorry, Cyril, give me that figure again. 3000? 3150. 3150. So I'm finding a different amount. I'm finding 4,150. Okay, let me see. 15,000 minus 10,000. Yeah, minus sorry, 4,150, 4, right? All right, let's have a look at... Uh, before I go further, who doesn't understand the realization account? The disposal because there are only three things that you need in here to actually establish to establish whether you've got the gain on the disposal or you've got the loss on the disposal so the principles tells us that if your credit is actually if your debit is actually okay let me put it that way if your credit is greater than your debit you've got a gain on the disposal and then if your debit is actually greater than your credit then you've got a loss on the disposal but the main thing is before you get to that point you need to know what makes my debit and what makes my credit 
what basically goes under your credit and what basically goes under the credit. But here's the nice part. The nice part is you only deal with transactions that are related to that specific asset sold. The rest of the things actually come, comes back later on. So I'd advise you to do question one in your, I think it's type one and two. Or you can do, I think it's question 17, because if you go through the study guide, route, if you go through the study guide, route, I would advise you to go through the textbook, because it explains it much more better. If you go through the study guide, route, that means you need to make sure that you've got your textbook. But if you want to do it via the questions, because they're treated the same in terms of the principle, do question one and do question 17 on your question banks. All right. But at the end of the day, you just need to understand whether you run at a loss on the disposal or you run at a profit at the disposal. But the bigger question is what makes that? All right. So what makes that is if your credit side is bigger than your debit side, then you're running at it on the disposal. But if your debit side is actually greater than the credit side, that means you're adding actually here at a loss. So transactions that you need to go under your realization account, it's the money that you have received when you disposed an asset, it goes through to your debit side, and then you've got, you also have the depreciation and the accumulated depreciation on the credit side as well. So the depreciation, you need to calculate the depreciation for the sole asset, and then you're going to add it again with the accumulated depreciation for the sold asset. Remember, guys, that the depreciation and the depreciations they work together. They actually one in the same thing. Okay. So on your debit side, you're going to look at how much was the cost purchased for that asset that has been sold. You can just put it on the debit side. So either way, it's actually going to be just like that. Everybody else, who needs clarity? Right, uh, I'd like everybody to actually go to question 17 so that on, on Wednesday when we meet, you do that question on your own and tell me what are the challenges that you had. They're treated differently. It's a cost issue. I think I'm just not gonna do it because of time. So you can see that I have prepared. It's actually this, but it's more- Sorry, why is question 17? Where do we get it from? Uh, do you have a tutorial letter one or two? Tutorial letter one or two. I will have to check. Is it on my Unisa? It is on my Unisa. I think if you go to my Unisa and you go under your study materials, you should okay. see the tab one or two. Okay, I'll check it out. Thank you. Okay. And then if you can't get it, make sure that you're posted on uh, the WhatsApp group so that I can make it available. Okay. Um, but it's quite it's quite interesting. You can just go through that and try to understand a test if you do understand the So it's the thing is the thing about the realization account. It's just a whole new thing altogether. We it doesn't come much often. You understand? But the reason why you are doing the realization account entirely is because you want to know whether the asset disposed has been disposed on the profit or it has been disposed on a loss. That's actually the reason why. Nothing more. Nothing less. Happy? Well, let's quickly move on to the accumulated depreciation. Where am I now? I think I've opened up the account for the accumulated depreciation. Okay, yeah, I think I have equipment. Uh, I'm still looking for the other ones, just a moment. Okay, uh, the accumulate. This should be easier for everybody. How do you guys understand that? I want you guys to actually work with me. Yeah, accumulated depreciation. We have my image. Then you can have credit balance brought down. Do you want to take on this? 
for me. Mr. Okay, the accumulated depreciation for the vehicle is, uh, what is it? I think it's 5,200. Okay, and then you're going to have the realization account. Depreciation. From the realization account, right? So it's going to do, I'm going to have how much was the depreciation? How much was the depreciation for the sold yeah, no? for the 1350 okay 1350 okay and uh, just a moment so how much was the uh, sorry i think i made a mistake how much was the the depreciation for the he said for the solar vehicle is 1,350. And how much was the depreciation on the realization account? So you'd say debit, realization account. Let's go to the equipment. We did the realization account. So we're looking at. Uh, Three thousand one fifty. Three one five zero. So actually, just moving what has been credited from your uh, the realization account itself, and then you bring it here. Okay. So let's have a look at uh, appreciation. You actually credit this. So, how much is the total uh, credit side of the accumulated depreciation? 3,400 plus 1,350. It should be 4,750. Am I correct? How much is 4,000? How much is 4,750 minus 3,150? Uh, Sir, hold us quickly there. Come again, sorry. How much is 3,400 plus uh, 1,350? 4,750. Beg your pardon? 4,750. 4,750. Okay, guys, let's establish exactly what's going on here. Just a moment. So how much is the depreciation for the existing and the sold vehicle? Let's add them together. I just want to go through to we are on the equipment right so the depreciation for this and this and carry value is 210 sure and then let's have a look at the, the depreciation for 2000 oh, let's see just a moment to okay 2010 plus 650 how much is it should be 20 Six 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 zero two six six zero. Sorry, I put that on the mark here. Two six six zero. So let's have a uh, the look at sorry, uh, Craig. Sorry, Sarah. I'm gonna bring you back. Three thousand four hundred rent. Let me just do this quickly. Three point four plus two point six. How much is it? Six. Zero sixty. Zero. 6,060. 6,016, then minus 3,150. That will be... How much is it? Zero? 2,910. 2,910. Bongi, I haven't had you. Is Bongi still here? I haven't had you in a while. Are you still here, Bongi? Okay, it looks like she's gone. Okay, so that's actually your uh, transactions that go through to accumulated depreciation. 
So we did the equipment, and then we're going to have a accumulated depreciation. Depreciation, depreciation. Poor vehicle. Same thing, your credit, the open and balance. Credit. Balance. And then we also credit the region. So, and you realize you or you debit the realization. How much is the opening balance for the accumulated depreciation on the vehicle? Would you agree with me? It's 5,200. Am I correct? Yes. It's 5,200. And how much is the accumulated depreciation for the sold and the existing? 5,200. Is it all together? Uh, is it 5,200? Uh, Are you sure about that figure? Okay, let's just verify. Let's just verify. Let's just verify. We're going to have... Uh, let's have a look at the... How much is the depreciation for keeping on the equipment? Let's go to the vehicle. Okay, the existing. How much is the depreciation? 6,260. Can you all see that? Please put that in mind. And then how much is the depreciation for the sort? 1350. Okay, it's 6260 and 1350. 6260. I'm trying to cram that figure. Okay. 6260 plus 1350. And this is actually the correct amount. Sarah, can you give me the total figure? How much is uh, it's seven thousand five seven thousand six hundred and ten, right? The total. You agree with me? Where are people? Yeah, people not here. Does it give you the same amount? Yeah, let's get And then the realization account is this one. We just move it to 850. Let's go back. Uh, 2850. 2850. Okay. Then, uh, Cyril, give me how much is 5200 plus 7610? Give me somewhere 12,810, I think. Yeah, 12,810. So how much is 12,810 minus 2850? Give me that final figure. This is what you're looking for. Balance carry down. 9960. Okay. 9960. Is it 9960? Yeah. Um, hold on. Is a double nine six zero, right? Correct. Double nine six zero. So the week we actually looking for the balance at the end of the year for the accumulated depreciation, which is this. Yeah. Just do this. Okay. So this one is actually for the vehicle. Okay. Lastly, let's do the asset in question. Two. So you have equipment. Okay, then we're going to have the balance brought down. Easy. How much was the opening balance of the uh, equipment? Let's go back. Question. 
is 30,000 and for the vehicle is 50,000 rates. Okay. But what else goes in there? What else goes in there? Is the realization account for both? Both odds. Realization. Also need. Okay, let's show the realization account. Uh, how much was the realization account for the first one is the equipment? How much was the realization account? Okay, let's do this. Credit. Credit. Okay, you credit the realization account because that vehicle is no longer working in the business. So it should be regarded as credit as an out. And the realization account. Is. Right, let's go back and recognize those uh, few figures or transactions. Let's see. On the 1st of July 2002, Putin Limited sold one of the deal equity to demand of cash. Okay, so this one is actually cash. The equipment is 3,000 rand and the vehicle is 8,000 rand. Please remind me if I'm making a mistake in terms of the recording. Okay, equipment says 3,000. And then uh, the we call it, it says 8,000 rand. So let's have a look at the additional transactions under the asset. So in the process of YouTube, so we're going to have 30,000 rand on the debit side because we're adding the vehicle. So we'll come to the vehicle and say additions. So damage. It's a uh, this one is in the bracket because I'm going to put it such. Okay. And you are having the balance carried on. Basically, your opening balance in the next account in cycle carried on. How much is 80,000 minus 8,000? It should be 72,000, right? Right. 72, right? So here, do we have any additions with regards to the equipment? Let's come to the asset in question. Um, so we didn't buy any other equipment, which actually just is focused. So what we're going to do is we're just going to minus the two figures all together. Then it's 30,000 minus 3,000. And then it means that our opening balance for the next accounting cycle, it will be balance, uh, balance carried down, and amount of 27,000, right? That's a closing of amount. But uh, this is actually what we've been looking for in this question. Okay, uh, let's see. We'll come back to you for the. Any questions? Uh, nonetheless, thank you for joining us last today.